You're listening to Across the Table, a healthcare private equity podcast brought to you by McGuire Woods. Across the Table brings you inside the conversation with the specialists and professionals of the healthcare private equity industry. Hello and welcome to the McGuire Woods Across the Table podcast. I'm Amber Walsh, a partner in the healthcare group at McGuire Woods and chair of the healthcare department. I'm joined today as my fellow co-host by Holly Buckley, the co-chair of our firm's healthcare and life sciences industry team. We are very pleased today to be joined by our partner in the McGuire Woods Healthcare Group, Scott Becker, who also is the publisher and the chief content officer of Becker's Healthcare. Scott, we're really happy to have you join us today to talk about a really interesting development that we know that you are very interested in, and that is the evolution of partnerships between private equity and health systems. Scott, we'll ask you to tell us some of the more interesting things that you've seen health systems doing relative to their venture arms and their kind of partnerships with private equity. Sure. Amber and Holly, thank you for having me. We'll talk really about two types of ventures that we see, and it's sort of both fascinating. I would say over the last 10 years or so, you've seen a great growth in one type of venture, which is provider-driven joint ventures, and we'll discuss that. The more recent thing that we've seen over the last five years, but they've really come to the forefront now, is hospital venture-related operations often in the technology space, and we'll talk about that. So I'll differentiate these two as follows. The first thing is, you've had over the last decade or two, a lot of provider-driven joint ventures, meaning outpatient surgery centers, outpatient dialysis facilities, outpatient therapy facilities, all kinds of facilities where there's both a health system involved and a company, and that company is often sponsored by a private equity fund. So you've seen a ton of those. More recently, last few years, you've seen those, a few of those that have really grown around the urgent care space. And then you've seen some of the evolution there, some of those private equity sponsored, some of those Optum acquired, but a whole mix. So you saw for 10, 15 years, a great growth in this outpatient joint venture space, often filled by a mix of hospital desires and private equity sponsored companies partnering with hospitals in a range of areas. The more recent thing that we've seen, and we think it's really interesting, is the engagement of major health systems in financing, building, buying into, growing technology-driven solutions through their venture arms and so forth. So you've seen over the last several years this emergence of a mix of health systems, chief innovation officers, chief commercial officers, and often venture funds. A great example of the venture side would be Providence Ventures out of Providence Healthcare, where I think they've actually built a portfolio funded with $300 million plus of 18 different companies, many of which are super successful, that they've invested in to solve problems that Providence faces and that they figure other systems face too. So they become a commercial client. Providence Ventures builds or buys into a company. That company becomes a client of Providence Healthcare, works with Providence Healthcare, and also sells services to other systems. And there's a lot of this. New York Presbyterian has also done a lot of early stage to mid-stage venture investing in companies. The Blue Cross funds famously built a thing called Health Box Ventures, where a number of Blue Cross plans invested together to help the same kind of things, build or buy solutions that Blue Cross plans felt that they needed. So you've seen this kind of growth. The other kind of growth of chief innovation officers has said, look, we're not big enough to develop a huge commercialization arm or venture arm, but we've got a very clear focus on solving problems that our system faces. So University of Colorado Health, UC Health, is an example of that. They're laser focused on not commercializing things, although they might, but much more focused on how do they solve problems they have through their team or buying the resources to solve a problem. And I see this evolution of venture as a fascinating growth, and there's a huge difference in the competency which with health systems do this and don't do it, 
but it's sort of this next level to what were 10, 15 years ago, bricks and mortar joint ventures around provider spaces. Now we see so much of these joint ventures in evolutions and investments around technologies and software as a service companies. Yeah, that's great, Scott. A super helpful overview. And I'm curious, you mentioned that these innovation funds tend to develop and invest in technology-driven solutions to solve problems. What are some examples of either specific or the types of solutions that you've seen come out of these innovation funds? It's a great question. There's all kinds of companies, whether it's the snowflake one that Warren Buffett just invested in is taking public, that I think had its seed at some point was touched by a hospital venture fund, or just a ton of different solutions. And there's all kinds of like small solutions to our solution, whether on predictive analytics. So for example, there's a company called Qventus that is a predictive analytics company that hospitals use to better improve their data around sepsis, around emergency room staffing, around a whole number of things that both venture venture funds invested in, like I think Andreessen and Horowitz, but also I believe some of the health systems invested in, like New York Presbyterian. Similarly, so that's just one example of a specific company. There's also obviously a lot of revenue cycle companies that have been built in partnership with health systems to try and improve the health system's revenue cycle and then turn it into a company. And that's been done just a whole number of times. And some of those also have private equity sponsors as well. And where are you seeing these venture funds pull talent from? Are the innovation funds generally utilizing talent that originates from the health system side or from more of the investor and development side? Right. So that's a great question. So the best of the best of these have pulled talent from serious venture areas and serious venture places. So the person who leads up the Providence Ventures effort is a guy, Aaron Martin, who comes out of Amazon Ventures, for example. The places that have built this, it's almost like anything else. The places that have built this and built this well are not dabbling in it. They've built serious teams around it. And so you see that. I assume that, like, for example, Cleveland Clinic Ventures, I'm not that familiar with, but I assume the greatness in these is the great integration of serious professionals in the area with serious professionals at the health system that really know the problems. And where these go horribly poorly, and I've seen this in action many times, is when you have an innovation team or venture team that's disconnected from the health system. So they're constantly throwing ideas and solutions at the system that nobody wants. Whereas in contrast, you know, one of the brilliant guys that leads one of these efforts is this guy, Dr. Rick Zane at UC Health, and he is hyper-focused on making sure they are solving real problems, not developing solutions, and then trying to sell them to UC Health. And there's a huge distinction. But to your point, where people do this well, they're not dabbling in it, they're building serious teams. Those serious teams often have outside professionals that are now full-time with the system, together with internal leadership that's really involved and really committed to make sure you're solving real problems. Scott, through your conversations through Becker's Healthcare and the several different venture funds that you've talked with that are hospital-based or hospital-backed, have they expressed more enthusiasm, more commitment to the venture fund in light of COVID, seeing how we've been able to respond as a nation or not respond as a nation? Has that increased enthusiasm? Has that dampened interest in their venture fund at all, or has it just caused them to flex another direction? What have you seen? Yeah, it's a great question. So what's happened is, and somebody said this to me yesterday, look, for five, 10 years, there was a huge amount of investment in digital health, sort of looking for customers, looking to grow, having to sell itself, you know, sort of a traditional trying to push it. And what happened with COVID in a period of three to four months, there has been this huge pull for digital health solution. And so you've had this huge acceleration of interest in companies that were built in, started, apps developed, solutions developed for the last five, seven years that all of a sudden found a real home in a huge amount of demand today. You know, whether that's new, new, new companies, I'm not sure, but it's a lot of companies and ideas that have been fostered the last few years that now all of a sudden are 
moving forward in hyperdrive. The flip side is there are certainly solutions that are great solutions that are just not top of mind on the agenda of the health system at this moment because they're fighting through so many other issues. But even there, in talking to some great companies, at least one of those has told me, all of a sudden, the hospitals are turned on to everything digital. So there's a much, after being dead dry March and April, there's a much bigger audience and interest in talking to us now than there's been for years. And so there is that tailwind to go with the headwind of hospitals distracted. Interesting. And one of the things that I'm reminded of as we talk about these venture funds is kind of a a similar but different model, and that is we're aware of some private equity funds that have health systems as their limited partners, and it's a similar similar related concept. And I'm, I'm curious how you think about that as a different model and whether one's better or worse or if it's just a different way of getting to a similar point. Yeah, no, I think some venture funds have just made a huge commitment to the health system area, whether it's through having health systems with their endowments, with their endowments, their money or foundations, yes, limited partners or investors, surely a possibility. But having them as limited partners, as we all know, is only part of the solution at the end of the day. There's got to be that constant cultivation of the relationship for there to be real synergies back and forth. So what I see more of, you know, I see it in health systems and venture funds and private equity funds. They're just so committed to the space and they're so committed to the commercialization of things with health system that they work so hard to stay very close and synergistic with them. Whether it means they have them as an investor or not, it's all over the board. Got it. And it seems to me that, you know, if you look to 10 years ago, I think that the idea of private equity or venture funds and health systems either collaborating or kind of almost combining was something that we didn't really think about very much. But it feels like today that dynamic has really changed. Where are we in terms of the evolution of venture funds and private equity funds and health systems being comfortable with each other and comfortable to collaborate versus where we were five or 10 years ago? Yeah, no, I think there's a situation where, you know, these huge academic medical centers and these huge health systems have so much both intellectual property coming out of them in different ways. They've got so many problems to solve. They're such a big part of the ecosystem in every way that there's just so much there And it takes a real systematic way to figure out how to commercialize those things, whether on the life sciences side or just the technology side, you know, with private equity funds. So I think there's just a recognition that coming out of these great academic institutions, particularly ones that are combined with health systems, there are just so many opportunities if synergized and managed well. So I think it just is, you know, and it's like anything else. You and I have talked for years about funds that, tour in and out of areas. And the funds that tour in and out of areas can get lucky, but they don't largely get the benefit of this. The funds that have made a commitment to commercializing life sciences stuff with academic medical centers, commercializing technology solutions with health systems, you know, they can, for the long run, win and systematically come up with ideas. I think it's very hard to do as a tourist, but I think it's like anything. When I look at Law firms, consulting firms, health systems, deciding they're going to have an innovation effort, probably the most important thing from my perspective is they have great clarity of their goals. Is their goal to improve service for that firm, for that health system, for that consultant, or is their firm to commercialize things? And even though these can be overlapping goals, there's very different people and teams that are needed for each effort. And so it's the dabbling concept I don't think really works. And it goes to your point of private equity funds and health systems intermingling, where private equity funds or venture funds have made a serious commitment to the area and to these big academic medical centers. There's lots of opportunities. Scott, you mentioned problem solving and commercialization as kind of two 
core goals of some of these venture funds. Isn't part of it also around branding, name recognition, and being at the cutting edge, or do you do you put that under the commercialization bucket? No, I mean, I think it's important. What happens with these, you know, health system-sponsored ideas and companies, there is a huge competitive positive and huge competitive challenge. So one health system sponsors a company with a private equity fund. Ten other systems say, I really don't want to use their solution because I'm kind of jealous. I'm kind of competitive. I'm kind of this. I'm kind of that. So I, I got to really like the solution or they got to really distribute it in a way. So, for example, some of the huge for-profit health system companies always built outsourcing arms or separate companies that sell into other health systems and often could never get past their own selves as a customer because nobody else would buy from them you know, or would want to buy from them. So the branding could be helpful. Obviously, it depends on the system and how they're perceived. Are they perceived as a pleasure or predatory? You look at, you know, Intermountain's got this magnificent reputation, and they've fostered a whole number of things, but they've also fostered the Civica, which is a not-for-profit generic drug company, and that's been hugely received, but it's also been, they brought in 11 or 12 or 13 other major systems to be partners in it, so avoided the stigma of its intermountain venture. I think it's a great question you ask, and the politics on it are all over the place. Interesting. Our final question for you, Scott, is, is what's next? What, what are you most excited about? Where do you think this is going? We've seen a lot on tech-driven solutions. Are there other areas you think? maybe genomics or otherwise, that we're going to see breakthroughs coming out of these funds. What do we have to look forward to? So that's a great question. I mean, right now, there's just a huge amount of everything around improving digital and consumer experience, which has been pent up demand for years and years, and now it's become a real thing. There's just so much in that space. Separately, which is a very different area, is in the life sciences area. You know, obviously, you see it separately, but it's a great example of it, is this vaccine development for COVID-19. But it's, it's not really that. It's, it's the genomic, it's the gene-driven, you know, vaccines for cancers, for other things, for other diseases that are such a fascinating development as oncology care and particularly makes huge strides and often not quick enough, but it's making huge strides. But that ends up being the big academic research centers together with really biotech as much as anything. It's sort of a different area. But, you know, there's certainly huge advances going on. You know, well, a lot of healthcare is still paid for by these traditional fee-for-service ventures that we're talking about earlier. Thank you. Super insightful as always. That concludes our podcast for today. Again, this is the Across the Table Private Healthcare Private Equity Podcast. Today we were joined by our esteemed guest, Mr. Scott Becker, partner of McGuire Woods and publisher of Becker's Healthcare. Your hosts were Holly Buckley and Amber Walsh with McGuire Woods. If you have an idea or would like to be featured on one of our podcasts, please feel free to reach out to Amber or myself. And you can reach the series of McGuire Woods podcasts on the McGuire Woods website. Thank you for listening and be well. We appreciate you joining us on this episode of Across the Table. To learn more about today's discussion or to contact us, please visit our website at mcguirewoods.com. We look forward to hearing from you. This podcast was recorded and is being made available by McGuire Woods for informational purposes only. By accessing this podcast, you acknowledge that McGuire Woods makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in the podcast. The views, information, or opinions expressed during this podcast series are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily reflect those of McGuire Woods. This podcast should not be used as a substitute for competent legal advice from a licensed professional attorney in your state and should not be construed as an offer to make or consider any investment or course of action.